1 Samuel 1. Now there was a certain man. All right, again, it's that certain man in the Bible. It's not a story. It's not a parable. Of Ramaz the Zophan. I hate to have to write down my return address all the time. And it's a place of Mount Ephraim. This is, this is where we are. And his name was Elkayim, the son of Jerohom, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuf, and Ephraim. Well, that's kind of interesting because that's of the children of Israel. I mean, yeah, children of Israel, but uh, Ephraim, tribe of Ephraim. And he had two wives. Now, God never, ever, ever spoke that a man had multiple wives. He allowed it, but multiple wives brought multiple troubles. It brought problems. Here, you're going to have two wives, and you're going to have the most difficult problem that Jacob had with two wives, Sarah, I mean, not Sarah, Rachel and Leah. These two wives are going to battle it out. And what happens in this chapter is the same thing that happens with Jacob. One woman is able to have children, and she has multiple children. One woman doesn't have children. And it causes her, you know, bitterness, anger. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Anna. She's the good one. And the name of the other, Penua. And Penua had children. But Hannah had no children. So now we're looking at a, another woman in the Bible who's barren. And when the women of the Bible are barren, they have a son. That son is almost like a type of Jesus Christ, and this will be Samuel. And Samuel will come when the priesthood is all messed up. And he'll take over. And he'll become a judge. So this is a continuation of the book of Judges into 1 Samuel. Samuel is a judge. Well, he's not born yet, but he will be a judge. And this man went up out of the city yearly, yearly, to worship and sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Now this is where the Ark of the Covenant is. This is where the high priest is, Shiloh. It's not yet Jerusalem has not been called out into David so the places in the land of Israel is Shiloh where did we go and this this yearly sacrifice would be the Passover this would be the one of the three times of the year that all the males were to go and this man is living right in God he's obeying the law and he brings his family and then we get a side note he goes to Shiloh and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. Now these are two wicked sons, two wicked priests. And God names them. And when the time was that Achaian offered, steps up to the veil. He's at the entrance of the, of the, of the uh, tabernacle. Just stand just before the brazen altar. He's got his animals, probably a line of people. He gave the Finneha, he gave to Finneha his wife, and to all her sons, it doesn't say how many, and her daughters portions. Some for you, some for you, some for you. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion. For he loved Hannah, but the Lord has shut up her womb. So Hannah, sad and in bitterness, her husband gives her more than his other wife and their children. He's trying to comfort her. He's trying to say, listen, it's you that I love. Yeah, and in verse 2, she's mentioned first, so she's by the first wife. Probably the first wife. And then you got to wonder, well, then if you really do, what, why is there this other woman? Because she doesn't have any kids and one of them there. Well, that's the thing with the Jewish people. You got, like the Chinese people that are forbidden to have multiple children, it, you want that firstborn child because you want your name. You want that piece of land. When a man of Israel dies, 
that land has been given to you that goes all the way back to Joshua. That goes on to his son. And they can say that this, this ancient landmark of my father, my grandfather, my great grandfather, my great great grandfather, and it goes all the way back to Joshua's my land. But if the child dies out, or he, or he dies out and there's no children. Now with my grandfather, Pucus, having two daughters, and died with no son, as far as his family line, that's it. There's, there will be no more Pucuses. The name Hayward is father, my father's side. He's got two sons. One son right now has, has a son. And that name could go on then. But as far as my brother, unless he gets married, unless he has children right now, as far as that goes, that name, baby. It's living your name on, and that's where we're at the roof. The finish of the book, the kismet, what is it about? We cannot let this name die out. We've got to keep it strong. And that's why it's so China and heritage worshipping of our ancestors of who they are. That is their God, my my family. And woe be if my wife to give me daughters, thousands of daughters, but she don't give me a son where my name can go on. And that's what's happening here. And like my wife said, it could be, all right, she can't produce a child, so I'll just marry somebody else. Rachel did that. Well, if I can't produce any children, well, here's my maid. And look who it produced. It produced Dan. And Dan is almost like the Antichrist. He's a bad one, the children of Israel. That happened even beforehand. That Sarai went to Abram and said, well, listen, I can't have children. Here's my handmaid. And that produced Ishmael. Ishmael, the Arabian, where everybody's against him, the Bible says. And the Bible's against him, everybody. And when you have this proximity that steps in, it's not a good child. But here, with Akhanim, I got no son. My lovely wife, Hannah, God has made her womb shut up. And yet we saw that with Isaac and Rebecca, whose womb was, was, was haunted. There's nothing there. And he went and sought God, and God heard him. And her adversary, that's, that's not a good word. When you're looking at the nation of Israel and you read adversary, that is anybody who's an enemy and Satan. The woman, what's her name? Heniah. Heniah. is likened to Satan and how she's treating Hannah. And her adversary also provoked her sore. Psalms 127.3. This woman's wicked. Psalms 123, uh, 127.3, 127.3. And there's nothing Hannah can do. Psalms 127, verse 3. Lo, children are inheritance of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. Now this is Psalms. This would not have been read in the time that we are right now. But you can imagine that one of the things she's doing. Haha, you're so right in the Lord. You're so loved by our husband. Look at the children I got. Watch I line them up. And it made her sore. She is dwindling and Nasticizing, if that's a word. Poor Hannah. And there's nothing Hannah can do. Yeah. I mean, I'm at the like, I got the uh, earaches and ear infections. I'm at the mercy of God. Only God can take care of this. For to make her fret, that means worry. Worry, worry about what? I bet you one of the things you, you know, our husband's not going to love you anymore. He's going to grow old and my son, see son here, see my son, he's going to take the family name on and then you're going to die off and what's going to be of you? 
Now watch this. We're not done. Now this is common knowledge because the Lord has shut up her womb. There is something told about Hannah. We don't know what it is, but they know it is God that's doing it. And Penua is using it against Hannah. Are you right with God? Really? Hey, then we could kill her. And she's fretting her. She's fretting her day after day after day. They are at the temple. Well, not the tabernacle. They are where God is in Israel. You are to say in Israel in the land, say, yes, that's where God is. That's the building where God is for you. They are there. They are making an offering for sin offers. They are doing what God is prescribed to do. And this woman is antagonizing that woman. She's not right. She's not serving the Lord right. And Hannah, we're going to learn, is going to go to that tabernacle and she's going to pour it all out before. Hannah's the, the right one. Penua is the wrong one. And we're to learn by the first chapter of Samuel, just because we do right doesn't mean we're going to get the blessing. As we just read as a family in the book of Job, why did the rich prosper and they tell we don't want anything to do with God? You could read that right along with the book of Job. Let me just get that. If you want to read right along with Job said, that'd be Job speaking in chapter 21 about the wicked people. Their calves generate, their bulls are okay, their children dance. That goes right along with chapter 1. How'd you like to live with this? How would you like to be in Hannah's shoe? The same household. And then go back and read Rachel and Leah, the battles that they had with Jacob. I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. Multiple marriages with the Mormons, they don't do it, but they do it. I feel sorry for the poor woman. Because someone's going to be loved greater than the other wife. I feel sorry for him. And as he did so year by year, so he's frequent to God. When she went up to the house of the Lord, so see she is, she is going to that tabernacle. So you would ask Hannah, yes, are you any kind of artist or something like that? Well, I can do it. Could you draw me a picture where that brazen altar looked like? Sure, give me a pencil and paper. She could draw that altar. I've never seen that altar. She is there at the tabernacle. Year by year. She has not given up on the Lord. So she provoked her at the temple, at the tabernacle, she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. And that's like my wife said, she's now at the Lord's table. She's in depression. She is in a state of depression while serving the Lord. And there are some people who love the Lord and do right. And because wicked people in the assembly of the church has made others depressed by their big mouths and by their by their attitude. I guarantee if it's happened in the Bible, it's happened in the church. Depression. Now, the husband's going to come in and try to cheer it up. And listen, I believe I've heard people speak wrong about it. I believe with his whole heart he's trying to do right. It's just like Job's three friends. Sometimes just don't say anything. What he, what he should have done is wrapped his arms around her, gave her a big old hug, and gave her a big kiss. Then said kindness, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weep is that? She's crying in public. Why? Eatest thou not? He has taken notice. There's no food intake. Why is thy heart grieved? He looks at her. He knows. Am not I better than ten sons? That is that 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 must have been the, the sword into her heart. Because that's what she's been getting fret about. And I could have wondered if Penua had ten sons. <laughs> It's, it had, had sons and daughters. It doesn't say how many. But it, am I better than all that? Oh, I know you love her, but shut up. 
priest. And what's her response? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh. I don't know if she's eaten. And after they had drunk, now Eli the priest, that's the high priest, sat upon a seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. Now we're not going to go back to Exodus and read, but we read in the book of Exodus, we saw God speaking to Moses about the ark, about the brazen altar, about the curtains, about the veils, about the table, about the candlestick. Do you ever remember when they set forth to put down the blueprints and they actually made it and then Moses took it and said, Look, you ever remember a, a seat in the tabernacle? No. Somebody, somebody, Mercy seat. Somebody said in scripture somewhere, or I heard recently, Moses. Jesus yeah, that, that, that's authority seat. That, that's what the, the Pharisees told Jesus. I mean, that's what Jesus, they had their own little Moses throne. Where that came from, who knows? But it's not it's, it's not the place here. And Eli, who we're gonna find out is late is lazy and fat, <laughs> he puts himself a seat where there was to be no seat. That priest was supposed to be walking, standing. You're not supposed to be, you're supposed to be going the Christian. There's no place. And then you're going to read later on as we get into Samuel, 1st Kings, 2nd Kings, Chronicles. They're going to put other stuff in this temple. They're going to close this temple. And she was in bitterness of soul. Not just down deep of her eternalness. And prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. So this is serious. And she vowed the vow and said, and God, the Holy Spirit, writes this prayer down. O Lord of hosts, second word is Jehovah, Lord. Oh, that's agony. Oh, Lord of hosts. All the hosts, all the angels, all the stars, everything there is. <laughs> if thou, God, will indeed look on the affliction, the affliction, look at the words, the affliction of thy handmaid. I, I serve you, Lord. I, I, I try to do right for you, Lord. And remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid. Look at handmaid, handmaid, handmaid. A man child. If I could have one or two, I can have a male or female. I want a man child. Then I will give him unto the Lord, Jehovah, all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. She says, listen, you give me a man child, I'll make him a Nazareth to you, Lord. That's almost like Samson. And we're coming out of the book of Judges where Samson would be a, a, a closer history. And maybe she's thinking about that. I don't know. But she said, the, the best thing I could think about, if you were to give me a son, Lord, I'll give him right back to you. And I don't think she's speaking wholeheartedly, half-heartedly, because she's going to do this prayer that she requests. She's going to give Samuel over to God. She's seriously in prayer, and she's not uttering idle words. And it came to pass as she continued praying, Pray before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. He's looking at watching her. Now Hannah, she spank in her heart, and only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. So her lips are moving, but nothing's coming out. Therefore, Eli thought her to have been drunken. Right, look at that, jumping to conclusion. He's over there, oh, look at that drunken woman over there. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee, you're drunk. But now she's getting it from the high priest. She's down there on her knees, praying before God, seriously in bitterness uh, of depression, reaching out to God. And the one person that would do something has come up to her. 
you drunk. Her husband. Oh, am I not better than ten sons? The other way. Well, look at all the children. You ain't got no children. I'm right with God. You're not. This woman, I'm surprised, is. Man. Accuses her of drinking. And Hannah answered and said, and I can just imagine just the softness of non sarcastic. No, my lord. No. Treat them respect, my lord. I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit, bitterness, sorrow, fretting. I have not drunk neither wine nor strong drink. So when you come back over here, in verse 9 it says, And when he had ate and drunk, that's not her. She's on a fast. Wine would be that grape juice. Strong drink would be stronger than grape juice. But have spread, have poured out my soul before the Lord. I, I just I'm letting it all go. This will bring the very death of me if God will not answer. I will go down into the grave into eternal life, not ever having a son. And you accuse me of being a drunk. Wow, I'm telling you. Count not thy handmaid. Look at it. Look at it. Count her. She's humble herself. I'm a servant. For a daughter of Belial. Oh, look at the Belial. Remember we talked about them in Judges? What do they do? They get drunk. And they have sex. They'll have sex with anybody they can have and they get drunk. There's more Belials to come. They're wicked. You know what Hannah said about her being charged with being a drunk? She takes that drunk and they say, I am no wicked person. Boy, America's gone the wrong way. Come on, you you sell your beer and you put drink responsibility? Why not just don't drink at all? That's what she's saying. I'm not a wicked person just by drinking. For out of the abundance of my complaint, that's the first time that word shows up. And that bitterness was, a, I don't know if I said that in verse 10, that's the first time that showed up. But complaint. Don't we ever complain ourselves? And wouldn't you think what she said in verse 11 to God, she says, she is telling God her story. And she tells Eli, I'm complaining. But I'm complaining to God. And I think if we tell God what is going on in our lives, that we remind God, hey, you know, this is what's happening. And we be honest and serious. Yeah, we're complaining. But we're complaining to God. The children of Israel in the wilderness complained to Moses. Well, what's Moses going to do? And a lot of times they complained that it was Moses' fault. Like, hey, the ground opened up to saw these families. This specific family. Moses, it was your fault. No. She said, I'm not drunk. I am reaching out to God with what's troubling me right now. And grief has spoken hitherto. I'm speaking to God. That's why you didn't see my lips move. I mean, that's why you didn't see the words come out of my mouth when my lips move. Because I was talking to God. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you, buddy. And Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Now, verse 17, that sounds great and all that. She never tells him what, what she's praying about. She never tells what he, he what she is reaching out to. What if it was, let's go on the other side. Let's say she was praying about an enemy that she wanted dead. Let's say she was praying about Peniel being struck by God with bolts of lightning. Now, let's just say that for a moment. Eli walks up to her, you're drunk. Oh, okay, okay, switch the coin. May God answer your prayer. What if that prayer was to kill somebody? It's not. He does not inquire what that prayer is. And he goes, okay, go in peace, like the Pope would say, and may God grant you your prayer. He doesn't ask her. And she said, let thy handmaid 
and grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat. Oh, now she's eating again. And her countenance was no more sad. All right, this cheered her up. God's going to answer your prayer. And she went and had a meal. And they rose up in the morning early. There are always early risers in the Bible. I guess you couldn't push a chicken or a rooster for snoo. It bites you back. I mean, that's, that's what was their alarm clocks. Today we got electronic alarm clocks so we can hit snoo. It's not going to peck at you back. And worship before the Lord. So they get up early. Before they leave, they go to the temple, the tabernacle, and they worship God before they leave. It's almost like they get down on their knees or they just say, all right, Lord God, can you please... Thank you for getting us here. Can you grant us a safe journey back home? And returned and came to the house to Rima, that's the city. And I kind of knew Hannah, his wife. Oh, look at that new there. Just like Adam knew Eve. And in Judges, those men wanted to know the man. And the Lord remembered her. Now watch the answer prayer, verse 11. O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and the Lord remembered. Look at the Lord answer that prayer. Look how, look how the Holy Spirit says, I answered that, answer that prayer. God remembered you, just like you asked. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come, about after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son, and called his name Samuel. Samuel means ask of God. Sam. Hebrew means ask. The E-L, the U-E-L or E-L specific means Jehovah. Jehovah asked or I asked of God. And that's what she did. So they would come up and say, where did you get your name, Samuel? Well, asked of God. How did you get that? My mom asked for me. Wonderful. A lot better than, than one of Eli's sons, his grandson is going to be called Ichabod. What does Ichabod mean? It means God left us. <laughs> Saying, because I asked him of the Lord. Man, not only did she, she said to her, I am going to name this son Jehovah. And my request, my prayer. And the man of Cain in all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. Look at that. The Bible doesn't even mention the other wives. It doesn't mention the other sons and daughters. It just says his whole house. She's been forsaken by God and her sons. But Hannah went not up. For she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned. I don't know what age that is. That's taken off the breast. He can take milk. Outside of his mother. Then I will bring him. That he may appear before the Lord. And there abide forever. Now, is this the first time her husband's hearing this? She is... At least right now, told her husband, I'm going to bring Samuel to the temple, and he's going to stay there. And Elkanah and her husband said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good. All right? I, I agree with you. Tarry until thou hast weaned him. Only the Lord established his word. I don't know what the Lord's word is here. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. Numbers 30, verse 1. And to show that the Bible is being lived and played out in this family. Numbers 30, verse 1. Numbers 30, verse 1, Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, Jewish, saying, This is the thing which the Lord has com commanded. This is from God. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul, 
with a bond. That's the first time that word shows up. He shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. If a woman, Hannah, also vow allow unto the Lord, which she did, and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow, and her bond wherein she has bound her soul, soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand, every bond that wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand. In verse number six. Seven. And if she had all have a husband, and it does, when she vowed or uttered out of her lips, and she lips moved, wherewith she bound her soul, bitterness of soul she prayed. Her husband heard it, that's where we just left off, and held his peace. Well, he didn't hold his peace, he, he agreed. But she could say, listen, I'm not going to bring him until I weaned him, and I'm going to give him to the Lord. Okay, bye, dear, see you in a little while. That he heard it, then her vows shall stand, and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. We don't need to read verse 8 because he does not uh, disallow it. He allows it, so now she has to do all she told the Lord. And she's going to. She just wants that time. She can't drop Samuel off without being properly nourished. That he can take care of himself as far as food. And verse 24 of Samuel. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks and one ephah of a flower and a bottle of wine. <laughs> Call me a drunk. But she's bringing the offering. Hannah is announcing like Mary did. I'm a sinner. <laughs> and brought him unto the house of the Lord and Shiloh. And the child was young. So what is a young, now let's set forth now. What when we read about young children in the Bible, what uh, what is the age? The age of being weaned. Again, I don't know what age that is. And they slew the bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, Oh my Lord, respect. As thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here. Praying unto the Lord. And this for this child I pray. See, he, she didn't tell him. For this child, Samuel, I pray. And the Lord has given me my petition, my prayer request, which I asked of him, Samuel, the name. Therefore also I have lent. Oh, look at that. Let me look up here real quick. Let me check something. Well, the first time that shows up is Exodus 12, 36. And it says, people, that's the stuff that they borrowed. All right, so that Lent. I borrowed him to the Lord. She hands him over to the Lord his entire life. I have lent him to the Lord, Jehovah. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord, and he is. The Lord answers his request of Hannah, and the Lord uses him from this point and all the way to his death. And yet there's a religion out there, oh, season of Lent, where we give up things. Giving up alcohol, which she brought a bottle of wine, giving up candy is far less than what is being lent right here. She's giving her only son now. She has prayed for this child. She has yearned this child. She has been uh, brutally bruised by mouth for not having children. Now she has a child and she's going to give him to the Lord. Now why does she say Lent and not, here, I give him to you? She doesn't know how Samuel's going to grow up. 
Samuel has a free will. He could grow up and say, well, you know what? I don't care about God. I don't care. I'm going to go do my own way. But as far as her heart, as far as the love she has for God, the most valuable thing that now is in her life is what she asked God for, this son. This is all I have, and I'm offering back to God. And he shall be lent to the Lord. And he, Samuel, worshiped the Lord there. And we'll pick up from there. And give God what you love the most. And we will see that Hannah will be even more blessed. And her name's in the Bible for good. Her prayer's in the Bible for good. Her son has two books named after him. 